What's up everyone, it's Marco Hanna from PhoneDog.com. First time wearing a hat on camera for you guys, but we're back with the LG G3 challenge. Today is going to be day 18, and as I promised before, a full episode all about the G3's display. Why? Because, well, it's all about the display on the LG G3. It's a 2K panel, 2560 by 1440 IPS panel, and geez, it's dominating the whole front of this phone. So enough of me talking, let's get into the day 18 LG G3 challenge right here at PhoneDog.com. It's true, Quad HD is already here in an age where 1080p just arrived on smartphones not too long ago. It's crazy how fast technology is going in these mobile devices and it just seems like everything else is still trying to catch up to the last push of resolution. So the LG G3 has a 5.5 inch Quad HD IPS LCD panel. I know that's a mouthful, but in more simple terms, it's a big display with a lot of pixels. 538 pixels per inch to be in fact. The total resolution is 2560 by 1440, which is a resolution found on a lot of high quality monitors like Apple's own 27 inch iMac and Thunderbolt display, but somehow that whole resolution is packed in a 5.5 inch display. And since it's an IPS panel instead of AMOLED or any other panel technology, the colors are pretty darn accurate as well, and the viewing angles are around 178 degrees. But one huge downfall with IPS panels is the reflective property of the panel itself. Mainly it's coming from the Corning Gorilla Glass 3 panel that's on top of the display, but IPS is not bright enough to overcome most of the lighting outside, including the biggest light source, which is our sun. So outdoor visibility is pretty much dead in the water when it's in direct sunlight. And an odd thing is the LG G3 is somehow not very bright compared to things like the HTC One M8 or say the iPhone 5 and 5S. The panel just seems more dimmed and on the cooler side than either of those two phones. Next, I would like to compare the LG G3 with another 2K smartphone, the Oppo Find 7, which I suspect uses the exact same panel the LG G3 uses because, well, LG builds their panel. But obviously the biggest difference will be the calibration and software that Oppo and LG use to calibrate their displays. To my eye, the Oppo Find 7 has a little bit more gray to its color, the whites are a bit off, some of the colors seem just a little weird and odd compared to the LG G3, but the Oppo Find 7 strangely has a slightly brighter panel than the LG G3. Now let's compare the LG G3's display to the rest of the Android flagships of 2014. First up is going to be the Samsung Galaxy S5 with its 1080p Super AMOLED panel. First things first, the S5 has much more vibrant display. No matter what brightness setting, the Super AMOLED display will always be more vibrant, more bright, and more viewable in outdoor lighting. But in terms of color accuracy, even with the S5 in cinema color gamma mode, the G3 creates more accurate colors than anything else, which means watching movies and videos will look better on the LG G3, but if you like gaming or doing any kind of application work, the S5 will be the better option, especially if you're outside all day. The second flagship is going to be the HTC One M8 with its 5 inch 1080p IPS panel. This is still one of the best IPS panels I've used to date. Now I've had conflicting thoughts about the LG G3 and the HTC One M8 because I thought the G3 actually had a better display, but after spending about two months with both of these devices, the M8 still has the superior display. Something about the color accuracy and the sharpness just looks right on the HTC One M8. The colors are more natural on the M8 versus VG3, and the text may be less sharp, but just looks just as good thanks to a smaller 5-inch display on the HTC One. Outdoor visibility is about an even for both. They'll be difficult to see regardless because of their display properties. So if I were to rate these displays by quality only, I would say the HTC One and the S5 probably beats the LG G3 by clarity and brightness. But if you really deeply care about pixels, the G3 is still top trump. But it's still one of the best panels around, but the problem is most panels these days are pretty darn good. So thanks for tuning in my day 18 of the LG G3 challenge. Make sure to leave requests below in the comment section or directly to me on Twitter to at phone dog underscore Marco. And as always, my name is Marco Hanna from phonedog.com and I'll catch you guys in the next video.